All right, this is my man Peter Erdy here. We're at Pete, uh, Erdy Design in Largo, Florida, and um, this is his shop. These are all his slabs right here. This is where he uh, takes the slabs and, and turns them into uh, finished products. Is that finished? Yep. Like that? It's getting delivered uh, on Monday. Yeah. Cool. So how many species uh, of wood do you have here? Um, probably about 15 different species. Uh, cool. We have a lot of domestic wood. Uh, started to recently tap into the more exotic wood, like the one over here. For this table, for example. What's that? But this is also local. It's called Jacaranda. Jacaranda, yeah. So it, it sounds African. Yeah, it's it grows locally, but it is. It okay. is an African uh, species. Cool. But then, you know, you come over here, and here's like a, a piece of a... This is an end table. Is that a few different species, or is that just stained, or what? Well, that? no, this is just one coat of finish. Okay. Um, it's going to have five more coats on it, but this is something called Paduke. Okay. Which is that red in life, and this this is a highly quilted maple, which is from Washington State. Beautiful. So you know, I just made a little end table out of that. Nice. And um, that's called monkey pod. Okay. And that's jacaranda, which we discussed. It's nice. Black walnut. So about 15 different species. Yeah. A lot of different, um, you know, grain design, yeah. colors. Yeah. So somebody picks a slab, or or uh, you know picks which which meets their needs in terms of uh you know you know what it, what the grain has going on the color right and then is this kind of the next next sequence then you then you you bring it down here to start working on it yeah like i have this slab here this is an old growth douglas fir that's from washington state it's huge right yeah How this is, is 46 inches wide and 21 foot and six wow. inches long I have a few more slabs down there, these big ones, but this is going to be a conference. So the table. tree was like, oh like, yeah, it's huge. It's, like, yeah. This tree was like probably five, six feet in diameter. Wow, cool. Yeah. And then, uh, and now this, um, this Douglas fir, is wide enough where you can get the whole table out of one piece, right? Correct. But there's other species, like you're working on a table over here for us, yeah. which is. Um, you're not able, like this species it does not grow as wide typically. Right, it's so it's not, composed of three different pieces here, right? That you right. that you splice together. Exactly. It's, awesome. This is um, jointed together. And this is, what kind of wood is this? It's called ambrosia maple. Okay. And ambrosia maple is uh, it's, it's a very pretty wood. They have these little uh, warm holes in there and then the worms actually create these beautiful. Uh, oh, neat. Oh, beautiful. Lines in the wood, yeah. Cool. And this is gonna get basically cut to shape. Okay. Um, and now you you were telling me you this is a magic marker that you yeah I just draw on it to see how basically it's the it's initial design okay. lines and how I'm gonna cut it. Neat. So be, this won't be what we, what you'd uh, say a live edge, right? But it'll have that feel to it. Yeah. So I just want to show like on this. This is this cut or is that live? No, this is live edge because you have that the sap. Live. You have the sap wood right here. Okay, not as noticeable though, right? There's some right. where it's like, like it's this one over it's here. It's really radical. Right? Yeah, yeah, where you're like, oh, this is definitely a live edge. But then on like one piece, are some of these live edges and some not? Like some you created here and right. some are live. Some live of edges? them, some of them because the size of it, we have to cut it. Yeah, yeah. So like, what was a live edge versus a created edge? Well, this is the live edge, and you can normally tell live edge from the the, the fact of um, this is the heartwood. Okay. And that's where all the minerals oh, cool. and stuff. So it's lighter and on the edge. And that's the sapwood. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Whereas this, you created this edge. That was cut. And this side was cut. Got it. Because that was a big chunk. He was yeah. rotted, basically. Yeah. I was looking at this piece over here. Yeah. And um, the sapwood, you know, a lot of this sapwood, when I look at this, uh -huh. I'm like, oh my God. Like, did you have to epoxy this to, like, re-strengthen it? No. Because this is weaker, typically, right? Uh, the sapwood? It is. It's softer. Because yeah. it has different function in the tree. So it's, it's normally uh, much softer than that. But so like that's where the bugs typically get to, right? Yeah, the heart is normally don't get touched by bugs. Yeah. These do, yeah. but um, with the drying process, the bugs die. The dry, and, the dry, and it strengthens as it dries, or well, what? Well, it, it takes the moisture out of it, and then normally these are strong enough to just have it with the table, and different species has different uh, widths. Okay. On, um, on actual sap. Some of them has a lot of sap and oh, some okay. of them very little. Got it, got it. And you just yeah. sand it down until you have like solid, yeah. 
mixology. Exactly. Yeah. And then what's what are these things right here? These are bow ties. Uh, some people like these as a uh, decorative um, mm -hmm. show. Uh, we put it into cracks so it doesn't continue this to crack. This was filled, right? This is epoxy? Yeah, it's an epoxy glue. Awesome. That has uh, some tinting in it. Look know, at that. That is freaking cool. Cool. So you right provide there. the metal as well. You were yeah. saying you work with a welder. Locally. Yeah, I'm working with a guy that's uh, right across the street from me. He's a custom guy. He does really good awesome. Work. These are some more stands yeah. he did, I guess. Yeah. And then I had never seen this before, mm -hmm. but you you have these awesome like blue metallic epoxy right. you started to put in, and you you mentioned you're like create you route this and then create these designs. Correct. This was actually required by the client. The client wanted exactly this wormhole kind of um, uh, okay. design into it. Yep. This wasn't there. Yep. This was a continuous slab. Yeah. So I just draw these by hand and then follow them with a router. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. But the, was the metallic thing your idea? Was that the designer's idea? Where did that come from? Well, he, he came to me and he said he wanted something blue. Okay. So we created um, various... Um, designs i have a whole bunch of cups full of different colors of epoxy oh, wow. and then he came in he picked one uh -huh. and then we just tried to replicate that not every here's epoxy some, comes here's some more of it yeah not yeah. every epoxy comes out the same okay well wow, it looks like uh like an ocean in there yeah yeah it's it, beautiful it, it creates really nice effects for yeah. sure yeah but so you didn't invent that like when i first saw this i was like ready to give you credit for uh inventing this freaking like I did no I didn't invent it that yeah, yeah. epoxy is being used for wood decor decorative and uh, with purposes. the different colors and stuff yeah correct it's yeah. not uncommon but it's it's you who makes that texture yeah and then what's this this is um this is a red maple a figured red maple and what we talked about earlier these are the stress marks oh okay so where, where like a branch would come off exactly like okay. that's when the wood splits up neat and this is a book match table. Oh, that yeah. Means, well, you said it's used for guns a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah, like gun I could, stocks, I could yeah. see that. Yeah. Because if you come over here and you look into this angle, you can see the ripples almost yeah. under the surface. Yeah. You can see. Yeah. But what happened with this, uh, I put the two slabs on top of each other, then I double cut them, mm -hmm. and I pulled them apart about an inch, created a frame out of a uh, Packy Cypress. Mm -hmm. That's 3,000 year old uh, wood. Oh wow, that's freaking neat! Like freaking uh, yeah, it gets, mortise and tenons. Yeah, it gets basically oh, man, it's all that packed. Is neat. It's all packed together. Oh, beautiful! And uh, the cool thing about it is that how much does table cost? It's about fifteen thousand. Oh, it's it man, seats about it is sixteen. Beautiful man, one of a kind. Yeah, it seats about sixteen people comfortably. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Oh my! God. It's like it would be fun to have it. <laughs> It would be so much fun to yeah. sit at this table, right? No, it is. Yeah. Some people, everybody sees different. Yeah. Some, some people so see just, dining. So just to translate, like this scribe right here, yeah. design here that yeah. is just adds to the beauty of it. That is awesome. Correct. Yeah. Was that your idea? Was that How, yeah, how did that my, come about? That's my design name. Oh, I awesome. I actually designed this table. That is so cool, man. This is my lunch break project. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It will be done in the next... Uh, for cool. the next month. Here's some more. Is this all for the same client? Yeah, all the same clients, yeah. Oh, and awesome. And the cool thing about this is yeah. that we put a light under there for you. It's actually transparent. So when you put an LED light underneath this. Is that the idea, to put a light under the table? You can. You can oh, put man. LED lights under this. Oh, man. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's wild because you look at this table here and uh, it's just, it doesn't have the, you know, the color and it's so beautiful. And then you have this, you have this, it's just a, another element. It's incredible. Yeah. Wow. Well, so th one... this was the center of the tree right here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So like this right here is, is like, this was cut like a... Um, you know, it's like a, a chainsaw, cross, yeah, cross cut, cross right? Cut, yeah. And you can see that with the grain pattern, right? Whereas this, you would call this quarter saw? It's called a lap. Like a lap, saw. okay. When this is like the tree going up the tree. It's basically the log laid down and they put it on a big um, saw and then the, the bend saw just cuts it. Awesome, man. Lengthwise. Oh, this is so cool. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, this is where it all happens. And then you have your finish, finishing yeah. space over yeah, there, right? Let's go over there. Before you see it, um, like this is ambrosia maple right Oh wow, here. look at that. What the heck is this? Uh, what is this? That's a red eucalyptus burl. Wow. 
Yeah, it's a very. Uh, oh my gosh. That that size doesn't come around very often. Yeah. It's not not that easy yep. to find. And then this is the ambrosia maple finished. Okay. So it's, it could, you could tell it's, it's a very pretty uh, green wood. This is going to Boston. That's right. It's awesome. going to be the floating shelf for the Joseph project. Awesome. Yeah, and that's going to be another dining table I'm making here. Okay. Yeah. And then I have some more lumber here. There's a bunch oh, cool. of black walnut slabs. So, right so here, this was, uh, this was like, uh, what are you doing here? Why would you put that on there? Uh, just to glue up uh, any kind of uh, cracks and stuff. Uh -huh. that is that there. filler? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And that's the table that goes to Canada. That's going to be a large conference table. Okay. And, um, so just to give people more reality, so like this is a piece here where you would need to put epoxy filler in there, yeah, right? Correct, to correct. to yeah. make that hole. These are the bigger slabs that I have. These are these are huge. It's six feet wide. Wow, thick, huh? Sequoias. Those are black walnut. The two of them. But what are those? Four inches? Yeah, those are about four inch thick. Yeah. Cool. And then this here is the uh, finishing area. Okay. Hey ladies, Hello. how you doing? Hard at work on a on a Sunday. Oh, yes. oh yeah. Yeah. And that's a spray booth basically, and there's more species here. Awesome. Ones. Awesome. Actually, that that piece of wood right there is yep. uh, it's come from a movie set of the original Tarzan movie with Johnny Race Miller. Wow. Yeah, they called that the whole area because they put a big potential pond over there. And they had to when was that? Like the 60s, or like you're talking about like the night? Like well, that was that movie was uh, filmed, I believe, in the 70s. Okay. I mean, I remember it when I was a kid. You know? Yeah, yeah. Was like in hu in Hungary. Oh, yeah. Was that shit tra translated? Yeah. yeah oh wow. Yeah. There you go. And that's a spray booth. That's where we do all of our spraying. Nice. Yeah, it's uh, it's a 20 20 feet by 14 foot spray booth. Okay. It do gets, you do you finish all your stuff here, or do yeah. you do some stuff by no, hand? Or all all in the, the, okay, cool, awesome, yeah. man. We also use a lot of waterborne products. Yeah, which, um, as, as opposed to oil based. Yeah, because it's more environmental friendly, and also yeah. actually uh, there's an Italian product that's actually harder than than lacquer based products. Oh wow, what's that called? It's called Milassi. Here's the can. Okay. The, that takes longer to dry or, or less long? Oh, uh, no. It dries about the same about time. About the same. Nice. But this here is a great brand. It's from Italy. Okay. It costs twice as more as the lacquer base. Yeah. But it's a better product. So that's something that's that's you recommend or is specified Right. But separately. also, sometimes we do projects where everything has to be lat platinum certified. So these guys hire, uh, okay. hire actually on a consultant. What would you call lat? Lead? Lead, yeah, lead, 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 lead. Yeah, 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 it's my, it's my Hungarian. Freaking Hungarian. What yeah, the hell do you call it? Lab? Lab, yes. Yeah, okay. Some <laughs> people call it a different name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to hit it in the middle, you know? Okay. Yeah, but this, this project we're working on, everything is going to be um, basically 100% green. Mm. Any product we use, we have to provide uh, the data sheet on the product. Okay. So the consultant who works with them can verify that this is 100% green. Uh, you know anything um, all based or lacquer awesome. based awesome yeah awesome brother well thank you for being on the show yeah signing out <laughs> be supple <laughs> peter Erty. and i'm taller than you <laughs> no you ain't brother. you bigger than me but uh you probably be my this guy was uh olympic uh uh, I was gonna say sumo, but uh, judo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> judo, right? Yeah, judo. Judo yeah. in the Olympics. Yeah, 92. Nice, nice. He got his ass whooped, but he was he would whoop my ass either yeah. which way. So, <laughs> all right, peace out. Yeah. All right, welcome to the Design Build Show. Thank you. I have my great friend here, Mr. Peter Erdi. Uh, Peter is Hungarian. Yeah. I'm taller than him, but he's bigger than me. Yeah. And uh, he owns a live edge shop in uh, Clearwater, Largo, Florida, Clearwater yeah. area. Yeah. And um, this is where we are. Pretty cool atmosphere for the show. These are all his slabs in the background. And is that, what do you call your business? Um, it's early designs. Mm -hmm. And partially it's early designs because we not only make stuff, but we also design stuff. Yeah. So. You know, a lot of the times, uh, people just don't know 
what exactly they want, they have an idea of what is that they would like to have, and then they try to communicate that over emails or uh, Facebook Messenger, but I always tell them if they're local, just come on in, and then we can look at wood, because once the, the minute they walk in here, everything becomes more real to them. Yeah, but I, I, I got that, yeah. and, and I want to get into that, the, the design aspect of it, but just starting like basically, Basic, basic. You do live edge custom furniture, correct? Built in, right? Is yeah. that accurate? Okay. Oh, accurate. Yeah. We do. We do live edge and contemporary. It depends what what the design. Okay. Cool. For. Awesome. Yeah. So, so wood furniture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Absolutely. So when I when we started um, when you started talking to me about that, I didn't really know what live edge was. I mean, mm -hmm. it's probably a year, a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. It was about two years. But ago. But now it's like I mean, I was probably a little behind my time <laughs> I should have known that but uh, yeah. but uh, yeah that's awesome so so you turn this furniture into custom and by live edge we're talking about like that's a live edge right keeping keeping the exact original uh, yeah. contour of the wood right basically. awesome so when you look at it that was basically the tree and live edge just means just keeping that just the way yeah. it is yeah. yeah and contemporary is just cutting it straight uh, making it more into a um, transition kind of a design phase you know mm -hmm. where there's a lot of squareness and not, not everybody likes live edge mm -hmm. and honestly not always live edge looks good in every space yeah it just doesn't but sometimes you put something more contemporary in there and it creates a huge effect just the way it is awesome yeah. Yeah. so I, I i wanted to have you on the show for a while you're our first what i would call because my company has worked with you, right? We're working with you right now. Correct. We have a project that we are doing, and um, it's in the shop right now. Yeah. We'll be shipping it off next week to you guys. Awesome. So I've, I've interviewed architects, designers, builders, you know, design builders like myself. But you're our first, what I would call a vendor or a subcontractor, you know, somebody who facilitates us doing our work. And I've wanted to have, and I will have more uh, on the show because you guys are so imperative to what we do because on one project we can have 20 to 30 trades right and we're experts at creating a project in design build the design build show is all about bringing back the architect of old wherein the architect built the derivation of the word architect is greek for master builder and up until the past 150 years ago the architect was responsible for the whole project you know, oversaw it from beginning all the way to the end of construction. And uh, we've gotten away from that. Design build is bringing it back. You know, but you, 150 years ago, you know, construction did not, technology was not advanced, as advanced it is, as it is now. Right. You know, there's, there's also, you, I think there's the aspect of like, people are available to so many different designs. So like locally, you're not necessarily doing the same thing you're doing like people can pick from whatever they want so right. the point of what I'm saying is when we get to our trades like our trades are integral for us and we love to have our trades be design build mm -hmm. um, because they can help us from the beginning of a project conceptualize a project and for their expertise the area they're an expert in make it better mm -hmm. And you definitely, I'm, I'm, I want to walk around and just show people your stuff because it's so cool. Yeah. But I mean, I've, I've, when we got here, I was like asking you a lot of questions just right. because <laughs> I'm not an expert in this area, right. and and we and we, and we, you know, it's it's great to have that expertise. Mm -hmm. um, but you, I guess also you are a design builder, right? Correct. Yeah. Would you? I know when when uh, I started talking to you about the show, I don't know how much awareness you had of like design build was it when what was there did you have a lot of awareness of it or no i didn't i mean i i have a couple of people that i know of the design build firm so they do everything in-house and then they also execute yeah but um what i've been finding here locally is that it's not like um the trade I'm in, I'm in, it's not, I'm not a carpenter. Like a lot of people think I'm a carpenter, but mm. not not really per definition. Mm -hmm. You know, a craftsman is really someone who, you know, uses his mind, his heart, and his passion to really create. Mm -hmm. This is art, this is art. Artisan, art. Art. artisan is another word. Correct, yeah. correct. And um, 
Uh, one of the things that we do here, uh, we, we do work with designers mm -hmm. and we do commercial and residential projects. We do not do installs because mm -hmm. um, that's not what our business model is. Mm -hmm. We make uh, one one off furnitures. Mm -hmm. And you, but you work nationally and internationally. We do internationally. We yeah. ship anywhere in the world. Cool. Because we're in Boston. That's you're, right. You're here, so we're. Well, I have I have a table right there that's getting shipped off next Wednesday, I think, uh, to Canada. For example. Oh, cool. Yeah. So uh, we do we do take orders from anywhere. Uh, we have some lines in now with Dubai and uh, various other places, um, Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. And um, but what basically the point being is that um, this is this is what only what we do. We don't do anything else. We mm -hmm. just do live edge and contemporary furniture, functional art. They like to use the word functional art because it is an art, but it has to be functional. Mm -hmm. So. When designers come to me, and sometimes architects as well, um, they tour the shop, they look at stuff, and then they can think with it better. But then they see that this is what we only do. There's a there's a couple of other companies in this area who does this type of work, but this is not what they only do. They do other stuff. They do yeah. cabinetry, they do stone work, they do glass work, they do metal work, all under one roof. Yeah. And uh, the design aspect of this is. Um, it's sometimes quite extensive because they just bring you a rendering and you try to replicate what the rendering represents. Now you're gonna go out there in nature and find that. And finding mm -hmm. exactly what's on the rendering, it's it, it takes some time and it takes to who you know and where those people yeah. are. Yeah, it would probably be better to start earlier with you. Like right. like, hey, here's the concept. Right. Here's here's the concept we have. Then you can like I think um, with us, we probably were a little bit farther ahead than we could have been, right? right. To start getting advice from you. Right. But I think you said uh, we started off with, hey, we want a, a light colored wood. Then you were able to help us, you know, specify the right wood. Right. And then, um, and then what did we do? Give you a drawing? Yeah, I got a drawing, I got blueprints, and then... Um, first you got an email. <laughs> yeah, I got an <laughs> email From an intern first. that was like, uh, <laughs> just describing like 10 pages what we wanted, but that, yeah. that wasn't as helpful, right? Well, it was, it was yeah, when, when we did the, uh, when we got that email, I was trying to read through that, and um, yeah, I got... But we did get you a drawing eventually, right? Yeah, eventually my yeah. ass for you. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, we did, we did get the drawing, but um, uh, basically, the earlier the better, because sometimes, for example, I'm doing a project soon for the Humane Society here in Tampa. They're getting cool. a brand new building. Awesome. But because where the building goes, they have to remove uh, three oak trees, and one of them is really big. So nobody likes to see oak trees go, and oak trees in Florida are actually protected by law. Wow. But when it's in the way of expansion, then they, they basically just cut it down. In most cases, they just dump it in the dump, mm -hmm. you know, and it doesn't get used. In this case, what we're going to do with it is we actually, um, uh, Thomas Everett Lamb Design is a very prestigious design firm in Tampa. Mm -hmm. and um, Never heard of him. Yeah, he's, he's, a great, he's a great guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, they, they do, they do uh, very nice um, projects. And he's a designer on this, on this project. And he basically designed the glass uh, staircase that goes up three floors. And all the stair treads will be floating oh, wow. stair treads, but that? they want me to make it out oh, of the that's oak. that's freaking cool. So I'm making the stair treads, and yeah. then the guys on the side are going to install it. But for yeah. example, just so you understand why is it always earlier the better, because basically what happens is uh, when I cut a tree down, you can't just start milling it. The tree needs to be cut down, uh, cut to sizes. You can't just start milling it? No. Mm -hmm. okay. the, the tree needs to rest. You've got to yeah. put the log yeah, it's down. It's got to dry out. The, the longer the better. Sometimes yeah. it's a couple of years. Oak is a very dense wood. But when you when you lay down a, a log, the whole purpose behind it is that the tree is full of stresses because the way it grows. There's wind blows it in a certain direction all the and time. What, how does that show up? What's a stress? How does a stress well, show up? Um, when we take a walk, I'll show you some okay, stress. Cool, yeah. there's, there's, especially in the crotch, there's so, it's called the crotch when the tree splits into our uh, branches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see the, the stress marks in the wood. It's very pretty. They use it a lot, that particular part of the wood. They use it for gun stocks, instrument mm -hmm. wood. But it's a very beautiful it's part of the like tree. It's kind of like a hole in it, almost? 
it's like it's not, it's not a hole, but it's that's where the grain gets really rich. Gotcha. But um, for example, so you have to leave the log rest for several months, or the longer the better, even years sometimes. Yeah. And then when you got through the time, then you basically slab the wood to the um, you oversize it, of course, because when you dry wood, it also shrinks. Mm -hmm. Then you have to cut it into the lumber that you are doing. Mm -hmm. And then you have to dry it. But drying could take mm. anywhere from uh, two to four months. Depends on the thickness and depends on the species. Mm -hmm. There are very high-tech dryers that it's called a vacuum kill and dry, which dries them even quicker. But the problem with that is that it puts a tremendous amount of pressure on the wood. It's 1,200 pounds per square inch. And our company is pretty much built on um, George Nakashima's uh, Teachings. Japanese fellow. Oh, I've seen his. He's, George, got, he's got a book or two, right? Yeah, George uh, Nakashima. It's incredible. Yeah, I have it on the shelf. Yeah, and George Nakashima brought basically live etch to the U.S. in the in the early early nineteen um, hundreds, or I believe it was somewhere around 1940, 1950. And he's he's gone, but his books are here. His yeah, legacy we, is. We here. have a client who owns a uh, table by him, yeah. and we did some uh, furniture pre pre early yeah. uh, design existing uh yeah. kind of yeah. matching and playing yeah. off of it yeah yeah but it's it's uh and he, he he actually talks about that he actually talks about the best way to dry wood is by air just air okay. dry it and the the rule of thumb is really um it's one inch per year yeah so if you have a three inch four inch thick slab that's going to take you about oh, three wow. and a half years to dry and wow. air dry it. Yeah, yeah. So you've got to think ahead quite a bit. Yeah, right. It's not just like right. somebody runs in and says, he caught the tree and I want you right. to. Right. So it can't be like just this, uh, the Humane Society being like, hey, that's a great idea. We want to use this. High five. The architect plans it in the designer. Because if they did that and just had the tree sitting there, by the time they got to you, you'd be like, huh? Got some bad news for you. No, I, I, <laughs> we, yeah, I told them that we went on the site. And I have um, one of the companies I work with here, it's called uh, uh, O'Neill's Tree Services. Yeah. He's a very knowledgeable guy, and the reason why I like to work with him because he's not only knowledgeable, but he has a really strong integrity. There's a lot of guys out there who just, you know, turns a chainsaw on and they cut anything down. Yeah. Is he an Wrong. arborist? He's an arborist, he's a yeah. certified arborist. He was one of the largest companies in Tampa Bay. And he's not only really savvy with technology on how to cut trees, but he also really knows trees. Like he will tell you if the tree is sick, or is mm -hmm. about to get mm -hmm. sick, mm -hmm. or it's salvageable or not, and if yeah. it's salvageable, he will salvage it. Mm -hmm. Cool. So yeah, it's, it's he's, and the reason why I like to work with him, because our company based on only natural fallen trees or development, oh, cool. we don't just go and cut trees down because we like it. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's very important because trees are, are super important for our ecosystem. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So one last question, and then I want to start looking at yeah. some of your pieces. Um, do you, like, what's the difference for you working with a design build firm versus a designer um, versus, yeah, let's just start with those two. Yeah. Well, design build firm, um, we have a company here called Nash. Uh, they're a great company. They have a lot of employees. They do design build. Uh, yes, they yep. do multi-million dollar um, projects, and they, love, they do a lot of hospitality work. And the owner of uh, the company was here uh, not so long ago. A uh, very nice fellow. His name is Jovica. He's actually uh, from Europe as well. Okay. And we just very close to each other. My hometown and his country he grew up in, which was now it's called Croatia. Oh, cool. Yeah. They just, so, they just be Russia. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little further Hungarians south. Hungarians like Croatian? Uh, it's, it's some aspects. Okay. Right? You, we drink a lot of beer. Okay, cool. <laughs> but anyway, so, and uh, he, you know, he told us that they do live at stuff, but they really want to focus on more on the, um, on the meat of the project because they just have these one-off projects. Oh, yeah. they rather sub it out to me. Yeah. Because I have the lines, I have the resources, yeah. I know where to get it. Yeah. And they don't have to spend all the time yeah, doing it. Totally. So they just say, look, I want a mantle that's 14 feet long. And yeah. Long. Versus a designer, when, when the designer... Before you go into that, I just want to make a point, you know, like as if there's any trades or vendors watching the show, like the more you can develop a design build mindset. And really what that comes down to for me is accountability. Like, not just being like being tunnel visioned into okay 
give me the drawing, I'm going to produce this wood, but like how to make a project better and, you know, taking um, ownership for not just, you know, getting a piece or getting directed, but like, you know, contributing to it, making it better in the way of cost, beauty, functionality, schedule. It's also servicing the client because yeah. this, this, yeah. could take, this could take it, some time. It's, it's very natural, right? I think like great companies, it's very symbiotic. Like it's very, yeah. it's very, they're very similar mindsets. Yes, and we, we I love working with both uh, versions of companies because we understand each other really well. And one of the things that they like to do is to take the time out of it because sometimes construction could go on for quite some time, years, sometimes even mm -hmm, longer. Mm -hmm. In order to find the proper lumber that you want, if you don't have the connections, it's 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 a maze. Mm -hmm. You're just on the internet mm -hmm, calling mm -hmm. people and you're just not getting it. Yeah. But when they come to me and they say, mm -hmm. this is what I want, I know exactly who to call. Yeah. And if they don't have it, they would know who to call. Yeah. And that literally takes sometimes months of research. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, uh, that's, that's right. Huge. It's, and some of the projects we do, it's it's almost it's nearly impossible to do the projects unless you know who to call. Right. Because right. I got guys up in Washington State, uh, State in the Wild Edge um, Lumber, I believe is the name of the company. It's up in also Washington State. Those guys have millions of board feet of all kinds of species. And if yeah. I send them a picture. I need something like this. They literally walk the extra mile to find it, and we just had something reason like that, and they will get back to you with various options. That's awesome. But at least you have the options. Right. So yeah, that's huge. So, so now working with a designer, how's a designer, that, how's that different? Well, a designer is different because they come to you because they want you to, um, they have no connections, period. They, they imagine something, because most designers have the ability to just put it in the space and just think about it and just dream it up, right? Because the artists as well, all designers are artists. I consider them artists. But they don't have the means and the resources and even the what type of wood. So I have to pick their mind a little bit more personal, on a personal mm -hmm. level, like mm -hmm. not just their mind, but the client's mm -hmm. mind as well. Mm -hmm. Like why do, you, why do you want wood? Mm -hmm. Why do you want a darker wood? What does your floor look like? What does the paint look like? Yeah. What is the surrounding around the table that you want to do? And after we pick all those data about what's in the surroundings, then I recommend a species for the project. And a lot of the times it happened in the past that people would just buy a table and they put it in the space, it looks good on the picture, they bring it in, and they're like, oh my God, this is horrible, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So rather spend the extra month or two of researching or finding what you want and then really really have what you want. So when you when you live in this space for years, when you look at your your piece of uh, art, you feel good about it. It's not like you have this feeling of, oh, I should have got something different. Yeah, yeah. So when designers come in here, they they have an idea, they have a picture, they have a color, they have something. Yeah. And then I mainly recommend and design the piece as well. And of yeah. course, in very tight coordination with them, you know, how about this shape, how about that shape? No, it's too radical, too too strong, too much yeah. grain. I want less grain, it's too much brown, too much reds. Yeah. So there's all these various options that we go through and then cool. you know. So it's not that different, like working with us, like I'm hearing you talk and I'm like, oh that was kinda of what y'all yeah, yeah. what you did with us. No, right. it is, it is, but it's more like on a I'm gonna call it more like on a personal level it's done because they come in here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like they come in here, like yeah. somebody starting with you really. They physically walk in here, exactly. Cool. And, and, and design build is more done on emails and pictures and I'm trying to take really good videos of stuff so they can really observe it and see it and uh, you know visualize it. So audio visual has been a big help for design build because we know we're always in the same location. You know, like yeah. you, you being here now, it's a great deal, but you know, you have designers in your firm and we, we, we were able to agree on what we're going to use just based on pictures and mm -hmm. just email mm -hmm. communication. What a, Cool. What about this though? Like, so my company's going to install it, right? Yeah. So we're thinking with you that we're, when we're talking to you, we're thinking with that. Yeah. We're going to own the install with the designers you work with, you know, separate company's going to do the install separate from you. Right. He, is it easier, like, how does that come back to you ever on the install? Is that problematic? 
having the install separate from, uh, from us. the entity that, or like for us, you know, like we're going to own the install. Right. So we're, so we're, you're talking to the same company, right? Right. Is that more simple? Like, is it problematic? Have you ever run into issues where you design it with a designer, the design is great, it goes for install and it's like, yeah, problematic. Yeah, no, never had, never had that issue. Um, I always, I, I try to take responsibility full responsibility for the product that I'm basically mm -hmm. presenting to the company. So when it comes to um, um, an install, for example, even here, our company does not do installs. And mm -hmm. you know, most of the time we don't have to do installs because we do one-off furniture. So I, I build a, a dining table, I bring it in, set it in place, done. Mm -hmm. Different when somebody wants countertops. We don't yeah. do many of that. Or built-ins or something. Yeah, like built-ins, yeah, we don't do many of that. But when I do do, because I have the experience in doing built-ins or installs, because yeah. I've done many of that in the past from a different yeah. job, I can think with it. So, when, for example, when I send you that waterfall uh, table that we're going to make here, I know exactly what to send you and what to how to tape it and what kind of steps is going to be to cut it. So I'm going to be sending all those instructions with the email yeah. and all the whatever parts we need for the install, we'll send it with the package. It's cool. going to be finishing products. Yeah. It's going to be tape. Yeah, yeah. Like for so example, that's awesome. Because yeah. right? like, even though you're not doing the uh, install, you're thinking with it, oh, yeah. and you're th you're taking responsibility Absolutely. for it. It's not just like, here's your shit. Oh, that was that didn't go that well. Oh, well, it ain't my problem. Yeah, right? Yeah. No, no, we, we don't we don't do that. You like, set it up for that install to go successfully. Right, right. Like we had a we had a client in North Carolina that I was building this booth, right? And um, it was a, it was basically a, some kind of an eatery. So we had a couple of booths that we built here and we basically took it up there. And there were some problems with the size of the booth and how to get it in the space. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of our strengths in our company is customer service. So when the designer called us and says, look, we kind of missed this, but this here's a problem. And I just said, okay, we'll solve it. Don't worry about it. We'll figure out something. And we literally did it here. We took it up there. I actually built a door here to make sure everything fits through oh, the wow. size of the door. Awesome. So we demoed it out. Yeah. If, so we're not going to run into any kind of troubles. But that is the the extra mile we walk. Reach so we can, go. Good. Exactly. I, hope, I hope you got paid for that. Yes. Good. Yeah, of Good. course. All and right. you know, personal relationships are even more so our, our pay for living because money's yeah. not always everything. But when you do a favor like that for somebody, you get and you, you know, goodwill, right? That's right, yeah, that yeah. guy will be coming back oh, to yeah. you, you know, yeah, more, for sure. more work. So yeah. for me, it's more important than money. Awesome, man. Yeah. Well, um, I want to run through with you now. Yeah. I think we're going to play that on the beginning of the show. Okay. So I'm going to say thank you very much for being on the yeah. Design Build Show. Pleasure, Absolutely. look forward to uh, getting more uh, products for you and, and seeing your company grow. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Okay.